Hi everyone, my name is Garo Garapetian and my team member's name is Arshak Torosian and Kiefer Godinez. We will be doing a presentation on the auditing environment in Canada. Integration of International Financial Reporting Standards Before January 1, 2011, Canada had been using Canadian GAAP. And as of January 1, 2011, publicly accountable enterprises, which are known as PAEs, were uh, adopted IFRS as Canadian GAAP. They believe that IFRS provides more opportunities to compete in international mar capital markets because most countries have begun to accept IFRS as their standards. Integration of IFRS will eliminate the need for reconciliation and thus reducing the cost of capital. So, in other words, the uh, financial statements will be similar to other companies so that when investors are comparing financial statements, they would uh, look at it for both things uh, similarly. Uh, in the Accounting Standards Board decided to extend the changeover to IFRS for entities with qualifying re regulated activities until 2013. This gives some time for companies to adjust. These types of entities have the option to defer their changeover to IFRS until January 1, 2013. For investment companies and certain life insurance companies, the changeover to IFRS is extended until January 1, 2014. Private enterprises that report under Canadian GAAP have the option of adopting either IFRS or accounting standards for private enterprises, which are known as ASPE, by January 1, 2011. The ASPE was intended to simplify recognition, measurement, and presentation, especially in areas where it was overly complex. The ASPE is designed to meet specific needs of private enterprises and users of the financial statements. Government business enterprises were required to adopt IFRS by January 1, 2011. However, private sector not-for-profit organizations were given the option to elect Canadian Accounting Standards for Private Enterprises or IFRS starting January 1, 2011. Not-for-profit organizations. There are two types of not-for-profit organizations, which are the private sector not-for-profit organization and government not-for-profit organization, which serves the public sector. There are different accounting standards provided by the Accounting Standards Board and Public Sector Accounting Board. Level of Auditor Professionalism The Canadian Public Accountability Board reviewed audit files of some Canadian reporting issuers and found out that auditors did not apply proper procedures during their audits. Auditors lacked professional skepticism and did not raise red flags on items that should have been given more attention. Some of the major deficiencies in the uh, auditor's practice were the confirmation process was not controlled, reliance on confirmation with questionable reliability, inadequate audit procedures to identify related party transactions, and insufficient audit evidence to support the ownership or existence of significant assets and recognition of revenue. And now I will pass over to Arshak and he'll continue with the presentation. <coughs> Thank you, Goro. Canada adopted the International Standards on Auditing, the ISA, on December 14 of 2010. Some changes in the audit report include uh, emphasis of matter a paragraph is necessary when the auditor wants to draw attention to disclose or present such information. And the other matter paragraph is necessary when the auditor is communicating information that is not presented or disclosed. Some changes in qualifications of the audit report include nonprofit organizations in complete revenues may constitute a qualified opinion to be issued. For such qualifications, the reasoning must be stated in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph. And the inability to obtain sufficient audit evidence, inconsistent accounting policies, and material misstatements for opening balances in initial audit engagements may constitute a qualified opinion to be issued. Many safeguards exist in Canada to maintain auditor independence and objectivity, such as the mandatory audit partner rotations within seven years and the five-year cooling period. 
the internal audit department reviews of audit partners and audit engagement, the second partner quality review requirements on each engagement, and the audit firm internal quality procedures. In August 2011, the PCAOB required audit firm rotation but did not specify a time frame. Recently, the European Commission proposed mandatory audit rotations of six years, or nine years in joint audits. As of now, Canada is analyzing the pros and cons of mandatory audit firm rotation, mandatory tendering of the audit, which is the bidding process to receive in the audits, and mandatory comprehensive review of the auditor's performance with the focus on quality. It's CA, not CPA. In Canada, there are no certified public accountants. However, there are chartered accountants who are the Canadian equivalents. While CAs are well qualified, there are some differences. A university degree is required in any subject matter, work experience in a CA training office, and passing the uniform evaluation exam which is an annual three-day span of examinations with one individual test per day covering simulations and business scenarios. How competent are the CAs? The CAs are deemed to have pervasive qualities such as ethical behavior, professionalism, accountability, adaptability to change, take initiative, add value, and problem solve. Some specific competencies for the CAs are taxation, decision making, finance, assurance, performance measurement, strategy, and risk management. Business etiquette, considering Quebec. English and French are the two official languages of Canada, with 67 speaking English as the native tongue and 22% speaking French as the native tongue. Generally, the English-speaking population's business etiquette is similar to the United States in that there's minimal small talk and business meetings are really democratic in nature. However, the French-speaking population, primarily in Quebec, have some different business etiquette. More time is often spent on relationship building. Hierarchy is crucial during business meetings. Business cards are often translated in both languages and more emphasis is on honorific and academic titles. Canadian public companies are required to file their annual reports to any other information related to public companies to the Canadian Securities Administrators through the System for Electronic Document Analysis and Retrieval called CEDARS. And now I'm going to hand it off to Kiefer who's going to finish this presentation. Thank you, Arshak. So the country of Canada has a separate audit department, which is called the Auditor General of Canada. And what they specialize in is the business of legislative auditing, which is the process of holding governments accountable. And what they do is audit federal government operations. And this is to ensure um, independent reporting to effectively question or challenge the government on its actions. The three types of legislative auditing that they specialize in are financial audits, special examinations, and performance audits. The financial audit includes an opinion on whether transactions follow the rules and regulations. Auditor General can report on any matter they think should be brought to the attention of Parliament, which then makes a judgment on the financial audit of the Office of Canada. Second, the special examinations, which are conducted every 10 years, mainly examine the federal crown corporation. And what a crown corporation is, is a corporation that's basically owned by the government and operated. And what they do are provide an opinion on the management of the crown corporation as a whole. And the Office of Jet Auditor General submits an examination report to the corporation's board of directors and the board of directors in this process, once they receive it, are required to make reports available to the public within 60 days after it is received. Lastly, a performance audit, which is an assessment of how well government is managing its activities, not so different as opposed to uh, independent auditor auditing of private company. They begin public planning programs of audits several years in advance since the program of audits are complex and challenging in nature, and the Office of Auditor General of Canada focuses on areas where there's high risk involved, which means it could cost taxpayers a lot of money or threaten the safety and health of Canadians. 
They also, in these performance audits, they look into room for improvement within the government operations. Canada was one of the earliest adopters of audit committees, which was enacted through the Ontario Business Corporation Act in 1970. And what this Ontario Business Corporation Act explains is that the audit committee must be composed of three directors and a majority of the members in the audit committee cannot be officers or employees of the company or affiliate. So this is done to ensure independence. And they also review and report to the directors, the company's financials and auditors report before it is published. And the auditor has the right to be present at the audit committee meetings and speak their opinion on the companies and can appear under request of the audit committee. And if the auditor believes the information should be shared with the directors and shareholders of the company, the audit committee has a right to have a meeting. Unlike the US, Canada does not have a requirement of who can be an audit committee member. Um, in the US, at least one person has to be a qualified financial expert. Bill 198, otherwise known as CSOX, is was designed as an equivalent to the U.S. Act of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, otherwise known as SOX, of 2002. And this was enacted the same year by the Ontario Securities Commission in 2002. And they basically have the same requirements as the U.S. SOX, as in CEOs and CFOs have to certify annual financial statements, which is to ensure that the statements do not mislead the readers. and Initially, when this bill was adopted, Ontario was the only state in Canada to have a CSOX type rule. But in June 27, 2003, other Canadian securities regulatory authorities, except the British Columbia, added three new regulations to the bill, which are the auditor oversight, certification of disclosure, and audit committees. And this goes to show you the close relationship Canada and the US has, and that everything the US has affects Canada in the process. IFERS readiness in Canada. IFERS has, Canada has been in the smooth process of transitioning into IFERS, which according to a report published by PwC in 2010, the majority of companies were 40% towards conversion. 72% of companies plan to run IFERS and Canadian GAP parallel to each other, which means that while they are also going to use Canadian GAP, they're also going to use IFERS and run separate financial statements so as not to mix with each other. And about half of the companies with revenues between one to five billion will spend between 500,000 and $5 million for the transition to IFERS. So this goes to show you that larger companies, while also having um, an easier and more advanced time, more time to advance towards IFERS, they're also gonna have to spend a lot of money for the transition process as opposed to a smaller company, which will devote a majority of their resources to IFERS transition. 93%, almost all of the companies have begun IFERS training for their finance staff and 80% have started for the audit committee. And board training, on the other hand, is being executed by 65% of the company. The reason board training is being executed by this much of an amount is because the companies are providing training first to their management teams. And 72% of public companies provided disclosure of the qualitative assessment of the impact of IFERS conversion, and 5% disclosed both qualitative and quantitative assessments. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much.